Granular materials are challenging to simulate because they are multi-scale and multi-phase in nature. Discrete methods predict the interactions of individual grains as they pack, clog, bounce, and roll, but discrete methods don't scale to large numbers of grains. Continuum methods consider the bulk elastic, liquid, or gaseous motion of granular material. They are efficient and scale well, but they rely on modeling assumptions that are only sometimes valid. To accelerate the computation, we use a continuum model where it is valid. Elsewhere, we use discrete grains. We partition the domain into discrete and continuum regions, typically using continuum on the inside and discrete on the outside. The partitions overlap in a reconciliation zone where equal and opposite forces ensure the models agree. As the partitions evolve, we insert discrete grains and material points where needed to take care of and maintain agreement in stress, strain, and velocities. This hybrid approach captures grain scale effects in a number of interesting scenarios. We simulate a collapsing column of grains with the discrete element method. Here it is again with the continuum material point method, tuning the continuum to match the discrete simulation. Our hybrid method captures flyaway grains, unlike the continuum result. And the hybrid result shows good agreement with the overlaid discrete simulation. A penetrometer enters a bed of grains, inducing a discrete region to form, eventually splitting the continuum region in two. Hybrid and discrete simulations show good agreement. A grain-filled drum rotates, producing a characteristic S-shaped free surface. Hybrid and discrete simulations show good agreement. In this silo discharge simulation, the hybrid method converts material from continuum to discrete at the orifice and back to continuum on the ground. The discrete approach to modeling the falling grains allows us to capture the asymmetrical flowing shape as well as the bouncing off effect when the grains hit the floor. For a performance comparison in 3D, we conduct an equal running time comparison by letting both a purely discrete and a hybrid simulation expend the same amount of wall clock time and comparing how far the simulations progress. First, we show a bunny toss example. With our hybrid approach, we obtain a 1.74 times speed up. With a larger coefficient of restitution, we observe a more dynamic splash. Our hybrid approach successfully captures different ballistic motions. We can also simulate an excavator scooping gumballs out of the same container. With this bunny drill example, we obtain a 6.82 times speed up. We simulate a collapsing column of grains with both a purely discrete method and with our hybrid approach. Note the correspondence between the shapes of both piles. Further observe that our hybrid method is able to capture detailed flyaway effects. With our hybrid model, we are able to capture jamming effects due to so-called finite size effects. Here we simulate a silo discharge with a small orifice with, using a purely discrete algorithm, our hybrid algorithm, and a purely continuum algorithm. Our hybrid simulation, like the purely discrete simulation, clogs within the small orifice width, as expected. On the contrary, standard continuum models are unable to capture this finite size effect. With a larger orifice, we are able to reproduce a silo discharge. As grains exit the silo, our method automatically converts the continuum material to discrete material. As grains form a pile on the ground, our method automatically converts discrete grains to continuum material points. Like the 2D hourglass example, NPM fails to capture the correct ballistic behavior when grains are in a gaseous state. In contrast, our hybrid approach handles the full range of coefficients of restitution. When the coefficient of restitution equals zero, the hybrid approach has a more uniform flow shape, whereas when the coefficient of restitution equals 0.5, our hybrid approach successfully captures the ballistic motion. Next, we simulate off-road tires traversing on a gravel road using our hybrid approach. The tires have different constant angular velocities. With different densities, they sink into the bed at different speeds. Finally, we show an overview of our speedup analysis. We find that it is always optimal to set the thickness of the discrete and reconciliation regions as thin as possible. In addition, a theoretical analysis of the relationship between the speedup factors, the grid resolution n, and the total number of grains a and the purely discrete counterpart 
shows that there is a choice of resolution n such that the speedup continues to increase unboundedly. Thank you.